hello Zwifters and YouTubers. This morning we are talking to Paul Fitzpatrick, who is the Zwift DS. So thank you for joining us, Paul. Morning, how are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Do you want to just give us a bit of insight in, uh, in, in how you got into Zwift and in particular how you became the Zwift DS? I keep calling yeah. you the Zwift DS. I know yeah. you just say Zwift DS, but I, I yeah. view you as the Zwift DS. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's lots of Zwift DSs out there. Um, I just stole the domain name. Um, yeah, I uh, started Zwift in January 2018. Um, I'd come from Sufferfest and Trainer Road because I'm primarily a triathlete. Um, and was using their workouts and just, you know, everybody seen this thing called Zwift came along and I, I, I poo pooed it to start with because I didn't really get it. it. Didn't seem to be very kind of technical or structured or whatever. And I started dropping trainer road workouts into Zwift using a Zwift workout builder. Um, and I guess I just liked all the numbers that you, you get the trainer road, FTPs, TSS. I was putting programs in for me and my girlfriend into training peak. And then, um mid 2020 um my girlfriend who pound for pound is a much better cyclist than i am um she's joined vision e racing and started doing some of the pro-am stuff and i let the ds of that team know that i was kind of interested in getting involved and thought it was great stuff and one weekend he said oh i'm away do you fancy ds in the team and i went okay <laughs> and um proceeded to ride the course and find out what all their powers were and their weights and 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 started reading up about team time trialing on Swift Insider, which, you know, is the fountain of all things. Yeah, we've all done that. Yeah. And um and it just seemed obvious to me that to understand how to get these six women who I've never seen or spoke to before to race together well, I needed to understand their relative abilities and understand how best to use them. And that just turned into a kind of simple document that said, here's the course we're racing on. Here's the bits we need to be careful of. And by the way, here's the numbers I suggest we do. Didn't think about weights and heights and all that. Yeah. Um, on the front, you can all do that, can't you? And it went from there. And, and that kind of very simple version of the spreadsheet was born. Yeah. So, well, I, I think that's it's important to, to mention that because obviously that's how we first got in touch because I, I actually found your spreadsheet uh, you know, being, being a YouTuber and finding videos, I came across your video, in yeah. fact, and then eventually found the spreadsheet and, and was blown away because we, I'd spent some time with my team trying to figure out what are the right numbers, you know, not only on the front, but further down that pace mm. line to, to be as efficient as possible. Because, you know, I, I'm talking about my team, but, you know, we, we'd had the problem where we got riders going too hard, riders getting dropped, all the things that most team time trial teams have, have had mm. in their journey to get efficient as possible. So, yeah, just, just give us a bit more background on, on this infamous spreadsheet. And yeah. uh, I mean, I, I love it. I You know, we, we use it now religiously whenever we yeah. we team time trial. So just, just tell us a bit more about, about that and how it works. Yeah, so it, it came out of the fact that after the vision stuff, um, I started getting involved with Socks for Watts that everybody knows in WTRL on a Thursday, yeah. the infamous WRT team that smash every, everything every week. <laughs> um, and I was working specifically with their second team, the Unicorns, and it was a different set of seven or eight riders every week. They're always moving. So how do you learn about each other? So the spreadsheet grew out of that as it, as it became important because – I didn't know them. They didn't know me. They didn't know each other. And if you had some kind of structure that you could refer to every week that they trusted and every week somebody go, oh, yeah, where's the, have we got the numbers this week? What are we working to? Oh, I don't know if I can do that. Well, yeah, that sounds good. Well, maybe we should push it. Um, it kind of grew out of that. And then yeah. I start, I was in season one of ZRL with Z Sun. Um, yeah. And although I was in a team, I always dropped out of the team time trials so that I could DS my own guys. <laughs> Um, and finding out about the 120% on Zwift Insider versus a, a churning blob, it just seemed more and more useful. And while it worked quite well, I was getting feedback from some of the women in the team that they were struggling in those positions that you talked about, you know, further down the line, yeah. where Zwift Insider says you get 23%, 30%, 34%, and about 36% in each position because of their differences in weight yes so i started to fiddle around with well what are the differences in weight and height in terms of raw wattage using the team average as a starting point and saying 
if the team were all the same and we did 125% on the front, we'll all do this. But what if one rider's 10 kilos lighter than the other rider? They don't need to do as much. Um, and it, it, it fl allowed me to flex the numbers. And it also made you realize that a, a, a weaker rider, in inverted commas, isn't quite as weak if they're lighter. Because they actually don't need to go as hard in terms of raw wattage to go the same speed on the front or the same speed in any given position. Yeah. And when I applied that, heavier riders and lighter riders were like, now I get it. Now I'm staying roughly where I should be because my wattage is specific to me, even though I'm in position four. And it's not about my watts per kilo on the front. And we're all going to do four and a half. It's yeah. about what is my raw number for my weight and height. And I could almost, almost forget about the rest of the team. Because as long as I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and everybody else is doing what they're supposed to do, as if by magic, you'll pretty much stay together as a coherent pace line. Well, it, it, what you've just talked through there is exactly what we'd gone through. And, you know, when I first started, which was season one ZRL with with uh, doing more team time trial, and I've been doing a lot of the points races and scratch races from there. Yeah. But it was it was that we got a rough idea. We thought, well, we're all you know we're all reasonably strong bees. We've all got a similar twenty minute power, if you like. So therefore, mm. we'll just do four and a half to five watts a kilo on the front, and we should be fine. But it never quite got very efficient. And mm. this is why we you know and we have got riders from sixty six kilograms for myself through to you know ninety kilogram guys, yeah. and we we just weren't coherent enough and efficient enough. And that's yeah. when I came across yours. And and now you know each one of us just has this strip of paper across. Mine's the the the, the foot of my screen here yeah. with just my numbers on because that's all I have to worry about. I guess. Yeah. yeah. So so essentially what you're saying is there. We you took this this information that we've seen before. And and again I was I guess we were saying the same thing that we know that rider two gets this saving rider three. Mm. Right, four, but then you've you've taken that a step further and incorporated the the yeah. height and weight in that. And it, what you need to do as well is to take into account the hundred and twenty five percent of the churning blob. Yeah. You know, to to beat a threshold blob, as Rift Insider says. So I take one hundred and twenty five percent as a starting point, but then you might find that when you apply the weight and height for that person to be on the front, one of the riders might be at one hundred and forty percent. Well, that isn't that isn't going to work for them because they'll be at one hundred and ten percent in second wheel. Yes. And and I think you need to have a team that everybody is at roughly threshold or just below in second wheel and then is doing something like 125% or thereabouts first wheel. And then you'll find, thanks to the draft, they'll probably end up at about 85% at the back and then you build through. And that allowed me with the sheet to then add in suggested times on the front. Because if you've got a really disparate group, you might find one person could do 60 seconds or more because they're only doing 105% of threshold, race yep. threshold. Somebody else is doing 135 because you've got a 90 kilo rider and a 65 kilo rider. Yeah. So, so how does that now, because I've seen on your website, you've got the race time predictor as well. Yes. So, so how do those two things work together? You know, if I, if I was visiting your site, Zwift-DS yeah. uh, for the first time, yeah. How do I go about that process of building this, you know, yeah. power profile for my team so we can be more efficient? What? Well, the yeah, so the, the the spreadsheet that you can download and hold on Excel and the the time predictor work off the same stats. And the sheet looks complicated and the time predictor looks complicated, but actually, all you need for your team is an idea of their race watts per kilo, their race raw watts, and their height. That's it. So three, so three numbers per rider. On that race, what's per kilo? Are we talking yeah. FTP or are we talking race I, numbers? I tend to use race numbers. I, I would look past uh, previous time trials, previous you know scratch races and say, what do I really do for, for 40 minutes, for 45 minutes? Yeah. And I tend to take the 20-minute the power average off, right. off of, of team rather than saying oh well my f because plus the fact when i was researching teams who i've never met before people put in a manual ftp you know <laughs> you're and guilty it, and, it, you know, and it might be 20 or 30 watts higher than what you're actually doing on the race day so you have to put in what you think you can genuinely do not what you'd like to do yeah but the three the two the spreadsheet and the time predictor do work the same way they take those three numbers um 
And what I realized was that when I was trying to, I did my second video on how the fastest teams race team time trials with this 130, 140% intervals on the mm. front. I figured out that, well, Zwift must know, must, Zwift has a way that says, if team A does a certain time based on team size, weight, height, power, yeah, then another team made up of eight riders with different power, weight, and height, and team size, potentially, must go a different speed. So it's all maths. Yeah. <laughs> so if you know, if I work out, if I could work out what the differences were in power in seconds, weight and height in seconds, for every one watt difference or one centimeter difference or one kilogram difference, and also work out what the difference in a rider numbers makes, for two teams doing the same course who are in theory ru employing roughly the same tactics, i.e. intervals, yep. I should be able to work out any given team's time. So I did it by testing race time, known race times against each other based on the best male or female time. And once you know that it works, you can then apply it to a team that you don't know the time for you only know the stats for. Yeah, in reverse kind of thing, yeah. You're kind of reversing that. So that's how the time predictor came about. Um, but then once you've got the time predictor score, you've already put in all the necessary numbers for the power plan. So just add in some names and some identifiers, and there's your power plan. And then you can download a blank version of the spreadsheet yep. and fill it in manually. Yeah. The, the time predictor really was a vanity exercise and a bit of fun. Yeah. Um, it, you know, but, but, but it, it gives people a target as well. Yeah, and it, but it, it, from from what I've seen and some of the comments on Facebook, it, it's it's pretty darn accurate, I'm sure. Yeah, it gets it it it's pretty good if you put in the right numbers. I've had people come back and went, "Oh, we were about a minute out," and I went, "Well, did you try it with the numbers you did in the actual race?" And yeah. they went back and went, "Oh, yeah, we've just plugged it in and it was four seconds out." So yeah, there yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, f for me, I I'm not the most intelligent of guys. You know, I, I go out and I ride my bike and I ride it hard. But I, I knew, you know, from the research and the, the stuff that I'd seen on Zwift Insider and a number of other sites that there's a hell of a lot of maths involved here. Mm. You know, and, and I knew that we, we'd somehow got to work this into our team. So the fact that we, we found your site that made it really simple for someone like me. Yeah. And essentially, I've just got a number and a color and a position. Yeah. You know, w w was absolutely fantastic. And yeah. like I say, it, it certainly helped us. So what I want to do is just talk about the, the specifics of the time trial, the event, the yeah. day when we when we turn up as well, because obviously given your experience, you know, mm. of, of DSing the teams that you have. So, do, you know, let, let's take it step by step. So so the start, okay. you know, of, okay. of, 